Hi there, it's Ben Housel, and in this class, we're going to have a look at how we work with scale in Final Cut Pro 10. And so we have a project set up here, and we're just going to drag a clip down to the timeline. And I think there's a bit of shakiness at the beginning and end of this clip, so I'm just going to shorten it slightly. And essentially, what we want to do is look at a few different ways in which we can scale our footage. So I'm going to drop down the audio level here. So with a clip selected, we can look in the middle in our viewer and on the bottom left we have some options here for scaling for cropping and for transforming our footage so if we click here we can go to transform and that's going to bring up these eight blue dots around the edge of our clip and if we highlight one of these we can drag it and it's going to increase the size of our clip and then if we click in the middle we can move it around so that's the the very kind of quickest way of increasing or cropping your clip um, so that you can zoom in on it slightly. Now if you want to keep a check on how much you're zooming in and how the quality is going to be affected then normally I make a rough guesstimate with sharp footage that you shouldn't go above 120% of the footage but you need to kind of eyeball that yourself. So I'm looking up at the inspector on the top right hand side and you can see I've jumped to 129% here for this particular footage. So probably on the edge of where we're going to lose a bit of quality depending on how long we're showing that clip on screen. If you don't see the inspector on the right hand side then just go to window, show in workspace and make sure you have the inspector checked down here or command and four and then make sure you're in the video properties here. So in the audio properties we get options for audio levels, in the video properties we get options for transforming and cropping which is what the scale changes are doing. Now one really useful tool that we have up here in the transform options is the option to remove any transform properties that we've added. So if we come to transform, we can look for these little hooked arrows. So we have one for all the properties for transform or just the properties for, for scale. So we've changed the position and the scale. So if I reset the scale, we're gonna have this clip a little bit offset and we're gonna have a black bar around it. So we need to reset the position as well to get that clip back to being normal. So we can also adjust the scale in here too. So we can drag the scale around and we can also move the position uh, more accurately by dragging across these two numbers that will be zero when you start out um, and the X and Y axis will drag left and right and up and down. So we can get a bit more accuracy as we're modifying the scale of our clip and the position of our clip too. Wherever we see this little diamond on the right hand side here, we can animate that property. So we can add keyframes to, for instance, the scale and then keyframes to the position. So we can start zoomed in. So we've added a keyframe right at the beginning. So when we add a keyframe by clicking the diamonds, it's gonna add it wherever the playhead is. Once we've added the first keyframe, if we come to around two seconds here, I'm now gonna change the scale back to 100% type it in so we can type in our scale as well and change the position back to zero and zero and now we'll have a nice zoom out there as well so that's also going to bring it back to 100 percent where the, the clip will be perfectly sharp so that's one way of scaling a clip and animating it we can also animate things like the rotation properties as well so if i come up to the transform properties and reset these so that's taken away all the keyframes, and um, so there's no animation anymore once I've reset that. I can now modify up here the rotation. You can do it on screen by using this little blue handle in the middle. So I can rotate that and then increase the scale until I lose this black around the edge from rotating out of position. So I can just drag my slider, or I can click on the number and use the up and down cursors to increase or decrease by 1% at a time. So that's how to modify the rotation and the scale. And that's definitely fixed the, the horizon line there. And we're kind of ready to go with that clip. So I'm just gonna zoom out here and we'll choose this clip here to show a different way of zooming in. I'll drop the audio levels down. So underneath here we have um, some crop tools and here, we can use the trim tool, which is actually going to trim the clip um, and allow us to 
crop it, but it's leaving this black border around the edge of the clip. So if I come to my crop options in the inspector, I can reset that and go to crop instead. And what crop is doing is it's going to crop that clip to a certain part of the video. Then when I click done up here, it's going to frame that video like so without leaving the black border around it. We also have the Ken Burns effect here as well under crop, which allows us to do the same kind of zoom that we did before. So we can click on the end point here and the start point, and we can move those around or rescale them. So they're zooming in or zooming out. And then we can also, if we click done here, we clip our playhead over here. You can see now we're kind of zooming in a little bit to that. Let's just accentuate that a little bit more by going back to the crop and we'll do a bit more of a extreme zoom. So you can see now still a little slow. If I shorten my clip, the Ken Burns effect will be quicker. So it runs purely for the duration of the clip. So if I now, so now I'm zooming in, it's playing through to the end of the clip. And if I want to zoom out, I can come back to the Ken Burns effect, highlight my clip here, and I can use this little hooked arrow or hooked pair of arrows up at the top left here to reverse that. So now it's going to start zoomed in and it's going to zoom out. So that's a quick overview of a couple of different ways we can modify the scale, the rotation, and also animate those elements in Final Cut Pro 10. There's a lot of other different elements you can animate in Final Cut Pro 10, and you can certainly experiment with that. Using the hooked arrow to reset things is definitely useful. Um, if we have a clip where we're happy, for instance, with this zoom out, and we want to apply it to a different clip, we can use the copy and paste attributes function as well. So if I shorten this clip, highlight my first clip, which has the Ken Burns zoom out, I'm going to go to edit, copy, highlight this next clip, and then go to edit and paste attributes. And that's going to allow me to select, you can see here the crop property. So in this case, the Ken Burns effects, I don't have any audio properties to paste. So I'll leave that as is. I can paste that. And now you can see I have a, a zoom out of my logs as well. So I hope that's been useful. Um, and if you have any questions about changing scale, about keyframing, or any other questions about Final Cut Pro 10, then just leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.